All right, everybody, how y'all doing? So this afternoon, we have a couple late afternoon maintenances. We have cold weather coming in. And uh, so I've had a couple of my regular customers that I've done work for before. They called me and they said that they wanted uh, they wanted to make sure that their heater was good to go before the weekend because it's supposed to get down in the 20s this weekend, I believe, here in Louisiana, and that doesn't happen very often. Uh, I don't know, maybe not the 20s, but I think it's supposed to get in the low 30s, maybe the high 20s, I'm not sure. I could be mistaken. But um, I know it's supposed to get pretty cold, that's the point. And uh, they just want to make sure that their heater is good to go no issues blah 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 they're on my maintenance program anyway uh, i do have a maintenance program not a maintenance contract i do not call it a contract it's not a contract it's it's basically just an agreement between me and the customer that if you continue to get maintenance done with me every year fall and spring i give you i give it to you at a discounted rate and in the future, um, I will give you a discount on parts and labor on repair work. And when it comes time for an equipment change out, I will give you a better price than I will give somebody that's not on my maintenance program. So it's just an agreement. They're not locked into the contract. They can back out there. Again, it's not a contract. They can back out at any time they want and start using somebody else if they choose to do that. It's just an agreement that I will take care of them if they continue to do service with me. And they, they like that because the other companies around here, they try to lock you in a contract. And, you know, and if you try to get out of it, there's, you know, there's even like you got to pay an early termination fee and stuff. And it's ridiculous. So it's um, it's not like that with mine. It's just an agreement. And I give them great prices and. I've even had one person do a change out with me that was on it, and I gave her a better price than I normally would. So, anyway, I'll film a couple of these if I can. It, I, it may not be into anything interesting, guys, but I wanted to throw something up. Let's see what we can get into. Okay, so we have a very small burner assembly out of a rude rain gas furnace, an older one. You can see it's pretty dirty. So what I like to do with these, I take a brush and I will. It's gonna be hard to do with one hand. And then uh, flame sensor's dirty. Uh, I know Ted uses a dollar bill. I actually don't have any cash on me. I've done it before, it does work well. I will have to use sandpaper, but I'll be very careful with it. But I'm going to brush this thing off really well for him. And I'll probably blow through. I mean, it's clear. But I'll blow through the cracks and stuff with some nitrogen. And just make sure that it's, you know, we got good flow. All right, you can see the burner did come out much cleaner. I blew all this out with nitrogen. And uh, not that it was really dirty, but clean that up nice now we're going to take this flame sensor and clean it i know you guys are going to say something about this but you know I've, I've been cleaning flame sensors with sandpaper since i got into this trade and i have not had any issues now i'm going to do it very lightly i mean i'm not going to sit here and you know scratch the shit out of it but it does work Steel wool works. And I can, I'm just, you know, lightly. I'm just lightly uh, twisting it in the sandpaper there. Nothing too aggressive. I'm gonna kind of just wipe it down a little bit. I'm not being aggressive with it. And look guys, if you don't like using sandpaper on a flame sensor, that's fine. But 
I mean, I really, I don't need to hear your nasty comment. I mean, I know, I think you're supposed to use steel wool or something like that, but I, this is all I have with me. And plus I've been using sandpaper for years and I have not had any issues. And I will fire this furnace before I leave. Um, I like Ted's dollar bill trick. If I had cash on me, I would use that because it does do a good job, but I just don't have it. I don't have any cash on me whatsoever today. I don't carry a lot of cash. Um, it's not often that I do have cash on me, but normally I at least have a dollar bill or a 20 or two on me, but I don't have any cash on me today. So I'm pretty happy with that right there. That looks a lot better than what it did. So, I'm good with that. Okay, so we're finished with that one. Uh, again, not that interesting, guys. I know, so don't bash me on that. But I got the I got footage of the furnace running for a good amount of time just to prove that I did not ruin the flame sensor with the sandpaper. Um, again, I know sandpaper, they say not to, but I've been cleaning flame sensors with sandpaper for probably 15, 16, 17 years. And... I haven't had an issue. Now, I'm not aggressive with it. You know, I, I've seen techs that get real aggressive with it, and, I, and I'm sure that can hurt it, but you could see that I'm just barely, you know, I'm twisting it in there. Again, uh, you know, I really like the dollar bill method that Ted uses, but I didn't have any cash on me. So, anyway, the flame sensor's fine. The rest of the furnace came out really clean. I checked the run capacitor on the blower. It was good. I, uh, I carry some mean green um, multi-purpose spray and I spray these furnaces down and air handlers, you know, especially if they're in a closet. If they're in an attic, you know, not so much. I mean, if the doors are all nasty, I'll spray them and wipe them. But uh, on, a, uh, on a closet unit, I'll take that mean green and I will uh, spray the doors and wipe them down and anything else like uh, and if the coil doors, you know, got some funk on it, I'll spray it down and wipe it. It, it just, you know, it's a it, it makes the furnace look good. It smells good. The mean green smells really good. And the, believe it or not, the customers notice that. So anyway, we got two more heater checkups this afternoon. Uh, the next one is only about a mile and a half away, which is good. I like that. I don't know if it's electric or gas though, because this town, I have not learned it yet. I've only been here for a couple years. Now my old town where I used to live, I knew. Uh, if I knew just by the neighborhood if it was gonna be gas or electric, or it could have been, or some neighborhoods were either or, you never knew. But um, I'm starting to learn these neighborhoods and if I'm only going a mile and a half up the road, chances are it could be gas, but it could be electric. There's a lot of electric here. So if, if we can get some film on it, we will.
Okay, so we have a Linux gas furnace here that is uh, not that old. I did clean the flame sensor. I couldn't get that on film because we have a pretty good helicopter here. But uh, we cleaned the flame sensor. The igniter looks okay. It's, it's pretty damn clean in here. Now I'm going to check this run capacitor. You can see... Uh, some, how, how they do some of the work here in Louisiana. You've got your gas flex going through the cabinet, which I don't do. I don't like that. I would have hard piped it out. Um, you got flexed up going right into the furnace. You can see the, the uh, starting collar there. I would have definitely put a plenum on here, but wasn't done so we're gonna pull these wires off this capacitor let me grab my meter Okay, here's the meter. We're looking for five. We're getting 3.1. Let me make sure I'm touching it good. Yeah, 3.19. I'm gonna bring that to his attention. He wants to replace it. Yeah, it's a 5%. So I'm afraid. I think that's too low. Five minus 5%. Yeah, 4.75. So or let's do. Yeah, 0.25, so 5 minus, yeah, 4.75, either way you do it. So that capacitor is most definitely, needs to be replaced. It's out of range. But before I walk down to the truck, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a jumper on here and start this furnace up. abuse down here that's my Y here's my red they're breaking red with the float switch well there went my W okay let's try to get that W back on there some of that insulation back off that damn jumper. There we go. Look at this. Plenty of extra tape right here.
pretty long delay on the blower there. There she is. Let's see what speeds they're using. Those two are on park. They're using black for cooling. for heat or is that purple no it's brown I'm not familiar with that okay so the furnace is operational we're going to bring that capacitor to his attention and i usually bring my big blue up here with me but i had my hands full i'll soap here and then soap here and soap all this you know just to make sure we're not leaking any gas. And we'll pull the jumper. Things are off. We'll let the blower cool the heat exchanger off, then I'll remove the tape. I'm not gonna leave the tape on there. Uh, I'll put it back right here for next time. Okay. There's the piece of tape. I did take it off just so you can see. I'm gonna put it back right there for next time. Look, Dad, every once in a while we see them. The old Fusetron, or whatever you call them. But yeah, we got them too. Yeah, Tron. You'll see them every once in a while. Okay. I'm gonna go talk to him about the capacitor. Uh, everything else looks okay. I'm gonna bring my bag down. All I need with me is my uh, eight and one, if he wants to change the capacitor. Bring some big blue, soap down all the gas stuff. Shit, now I didn't put the door back on. Now I gotta take the door back off. Oh well. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's pretty much it for this one. All right, so that one's done. Now we're headed out to the country. Uh, those two service calls were in Lafayette. Now we're headed out to a little country town called Doucin. And when me and the wife bought, we rent right now. We're just renting. But we plan to buy a house in the next year and a half to two years. And when we do, uh, Doucin will probably be the town that I will live in because it's it's in the country. And I like living in the country. And I, I kind of do live in the country right now. I definitely don't live in town, but um, not, not out in the country like I want to be. Anyway, so that customer there, uh, I soaked everything down and... He wants me to look at some other stuff. Some of his duct work was pinched off the way they hung it. Y'all might have caught that in the video. And he's a he's not a stupid person. That's why I wasn't able to get much film. He was in the attic with me almost the whole time. And he was, you know, showing me it's flex. Doug, he's like, I mean, this, this looks pinched off, don't it? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, I'd like you to come in here, you know, and, you know, stretch them out to where they're not kinked off and blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna revisit his house Monday and we'll just change the capacitor then. And he went ahead and paid me for my maintenance fee, but he wants me to come in there. He's got about four or five runs that are kinked that we are gonna unkink either by shortening the runs and stretching them out or by rehanging them the correct way. So, We'll do that Monday. I doubt we'll be able to get film on it because he's probably going to come up there and want to help me do it. <laughs> so, but he's a nice guy. So, um, not a big deal. Honestly, this next one, um, do some out here. They have, a, there's a lot of mobile homes out here in the country. I take care of a lot of mobile homes in do some. So this one could be a mobile home. I'm not sure if it's a mobile home or not. We'll find out when we get there. 
and we'll get film if we can. If we don't get film, I want to thank everybody for watching. Just thank you for your continued support.